Well, for more on branding, I'm joined by Zach Hill, live from Burbank, California. He's the head of strategy at Toy, a design firm specializing in user experience and digital products. Welcome, Zach. Hi, thanks for having me. So give us some background here. What are the main goals when it comes to branding design? Is it just about grabbing attention or really telling the company's story? Uh, it's a little bit of both. And, you know, from my experience, uh, yeah, from my experience, the best thing I would say is that it's best to kind of avoid, uh, you know, uh, branding uh, mistakes, so to yeah, speak, okay. in a way that, you know, you, when you're making a new logo or a brand symbol, you kind of want to avoid uh, any kind of uh, pitfalls. And you kind of want to be safe with your first logo or branding if you're a new business or something like that. And does branding differ for when it comes to products versus services? Does it matter more if it's a product you can actually get your hands on? Um, yeah, I know it, it could vary, um, you know, just the level of logo, if I'm understanding the question correctly, the level of logo, it just depends on kind of where you are with the business and where you are you know, like with the overall company in general. So what are some examples in your opinion of branding that's really done well, especially in this age of social media where everything is so shareable? Uh, yeah, I think the the best logos or the best brands are the ones that are doing things in like a timeless fashion. I know uh, you brought up like Nike and Apple, and they did a great job early in their companies kind of to establish their mission and their values and their culture and letting that be translated into their logos or their symbols with the swoosh, the famous Apple logo. But it all started with kind of the, the mission and the culture. And by why, because they were able to do that, that led them to kind of having this timeless culture that's been able to kind of stand the test of time. And it's interesting because the Nike swoosh was actually created back in 1971. A graphic design student, Carolyn Davidson, created this design for $35. And then right. Phil Knight went on to use it when he created his brand. But how complicated is today's process of really getting branding just right? Yeah, you know, the, the, branding, comp, uh, the branding process could be uh, very complicated, but also very simple at the same time. It just depends on the level of uh, investment you want to make with your time and your resources. Uh, I've seen some great logos get created in a matter of a week or two, but I've seen uh, branding processes that have taken over a year. So it really can vary, to be honest. And how have logos changed over the years? Uh, well, logos have changed over the years because I, I think it's with the rise of technology and social media, uh, logos have become maybe a little bit more prevalent or a little more noticeable and also a little more scrutinized in the age of social media. So if you post a logo, uh, it, it gets a little more dissected by the design community and even just the public in general. So the, the process and kind of the eyes on the process of decision making when it comes to logo creation has changed. But the, the idea of a good symbol for a brand, that, that's pretty much timeless and that's kind of stayed the way it has been, always been for a while now. Now I'm always really interested by how companies use certain colors in their branding. Walk us through some of the emotional responses that brands are really looking for from consumers when they're picking these colors. Yeah, you know, most brands should be considering color psychology. That, that's usually the thing we look at when we're building uh, logos or brands. So you might see a lot of blue in tech, for example, like Twitter and Facebook. And, uh, you know, blue is, for example, related to safety, security, uh, a little bit of progression as well. And green could be growth, prosperity. My point is, is that color psychology should be strongly considered uh, when making color choices for your brand. And what are some examples of branding gone wrong or really missing the mark? Uh, yeah, I would say any uh, brands or logos that are missing the mark or maybe not l allowing the logo to kind of grow or kind of be a vessel for the brand, or in other words, the logo is too literal. You know, for example, if an ice cream shop is just, just showing like ice cream cones or a t-shirt company is just showing t-shirts, it's not allowing the business to pivot or to maybe grow into new areas. Uh, you know, for example, going back, I would actually point at success with Nike and their swoosh and just their overall meaning of victory. They're allowed to take the business in multiple directions because that feel could go in a lot of different ways. So, you know, logos should avoid being literal. And just quickly, we have obviously a lot of freelancers in the gig economy, as we saw with Fiverr. They're offering these logo services and branding packages for a fraction of the price. 
why go with a bigger, larger, more established branding firm than one of these ones that you just get for five bucks? Yeah, I think it just depends on where you are with your business and uh, how many touch points and uh, you know where the logo is going to be seen and by how many people. If you're just starting off uh, with your company, you know maybe if uh, an option like Fiverr might be something to look at actually. But I would say that if you have a lot of touch points and you have a lot of people looking at the logo and interacting with your brand, it's good to trust consultants and a firm that have experience with working with that that level of exposure for your brand and business. So I just think it depends on where you are as a company and where you're looking to go in the short term future and the long term. All right, Zach Hill, Head of Strategy at Toy, thanks so much.